Hello, my name's Mark Edgerton. Uh, I'm the owner of this house, 15 High Street, Southo, and this is my ghost story. I know the complete history of this house because my father built it in 1964. We actually lived next door prior to that, and when we moved into the building, I was three years old. I didn't really know, really know much about ghosts at that age, um, but my mother had an experience in the bedroom upstairs when she awoke in the middle of the night um, to find a, a portly man who was looking out of the window uh, and appearing to be laughing, although no sound was heard. She was unaware whether she was actually awake, and once she'd satisfied herself that she had, fear gripped her and she dived under the covers and woke my father, who uh, was rather disgruntled, and got up and checked the whole house and found absolutely nothing. And so it was uh, basically dismissed as a dream. After that, there was various uh, acts of poltergeist activity, things being moved, things going missing and then reappearing, uh, which was kept, I was kept completely in the dark being a small child. Um, but in the 1980s, um, there was another sighting. Uh, my mother had got quite flippant about this sort of poltergeist that was in the house and actually affectionately used to refer to him as Fred. Uh, but in the 80s, uh, in the dining room, downstairs uh, we had a painter and decorator in that was wallpaper in the room and he glanced up the open plan stairway and saw a man at the top of the stairs who he assumed um, was up there and my mother had sort of taken him up the stairs and so he called up to her only to find that she was in the, the living room and so uh, when he told her what he'd seen uh, they both uh, crept up the stairs armed with the poker from the fire expecting to find an intruder but they found nobody at all. Um, my first sort of uh, real inkling of Fred that I had was when I was 14 in 1975 and this was an incident that happened in the daylight. Um, I was in the kitchen uh, with my mother and uh, she got out a couple of frozen trout from the freezer and sent me into the garden to cut some fresh parsley. In those days there were no microwave ovens and so it was a case of leaving the fish on the side to defrost naturally. I cut the parsley and uh, I put it next to the fish on the, uh, in the kitchen and uh, we then went out into uh, local St Neots to do a weekly shop. When we returned, an hour and a half, two hours later, the parsley was missing. Uh, she queried as to whether I'd actually um, got the parsley in the first place uh, but the parsley the scissors were still in the kitchen sink with the, the, the sort of white monkey sat where I'd cut this parsley so it just disappeared. I think my mum figured out what had happened but as I was only 14 she didn't really let on to me what, what had actually occurred. Anyway this parsley went completely missing and about um, three weeks later uh, somebody, my grandmother opened the uh, the cupboard under our um, dining room stairs, under the stairs, uh, to get the hoover and there was this pile of parsley, blackened and charred and, and rotten. Now that's interesting enough but she'd been to that cupboard twice previously uh, since the parsley went missing because she used to come every Wednesday to clean and hoover and dust for my mother and uh, it was on the third week that this parsley suddenly reappeared and that's really the sort of poltergeist type activity that was, uh, was very common in the house. Um, I left the house in 1980 when I was 19 and I moved back in here again. Uh, my mother died in 2010 and uh, I moved back in myself in 2013. Since then we've had one incident that uh, revolves around a watch. A watch of mine went missing. Uh, I thought this, the strap had perhaps broken and uh, that I lost it. Um, only for a month later to find it in one of the bedrooms upstairs, laid out on the floor as if presented to me really. Um, no, no idea how I could account for that. Within that month I'd put a flat pack wardrobe together in that room. Uh, the room had been hoovered, uh, the bed sheets had been changed and this watch was laid out. Nobody could have possibly have missed it. Uh, and there it was on the floor about a month later uh, on display for everybody to see. If I've only got one real regret being a paranormal investigator myself is that I've never seen Fred. 
I've had instances of poltergeist activity that I could probably attribute to him, but as two other people have actually seen him, and I live in the house, uh, I would really like to see him myself. I live in hope. And that's really the last episode that we've, we've had with Fred. Um, he's an affectionate type of ghost. Nobody has ever been hurt or knowingly frightened by him. And we've come to accept him as part of the family. It's 2019 now, so whether he'll reappear again, I don't know. He seems to come and go. Um, time will tell. If he does, I'll let you know. <laughs>